You know, the coming year is likely to bring more painful surprises. Are you ready? Do you have a plan in case of food shortages, power outages, emergency evacuations, mandates? You should always prepare before these things strike. That's why I recommend getting emergency food from My Patriot Supply. They're America's number one preparedness company with several million happy, well-prepared customers. Their food lasts up to 25 years in storage. It's like a survival insurance policy you can eat when you need it. It will be there. Right now, you'll save $100 on a three-month emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. This kit can get you through any difficulties ahead. You get breakfast, lunch, dinner, and drinks, averaging over 2,000 calories a day. These food kits from My Patriot Supply are selling fast, so hurry and act. Go to preparewiththinkaboutit.com and save $100 on your three-month food kit. That's preparewiththinkaboutit.com. To avoid what happens after disaster strike, act now. Preparewiththinkaboutit.com. Hi, Steve here. I realize that Americans don't really have a clue about what they're facing because if they did, they would stand up in mass. We have places like Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, not to mention Germany, as somewhere for us to see and learn from. But I wonder, will we? You do what we say or you're in trouble, we'll lock you up for longer. Yeah, they were even threatening me that if I was to do this again, we will extend your time in here. Okay, so how it all started was um, a friend of mine went to work and got tested for COVID. He had a little bit of a cold. He tested positive. He got put into this quarantine camp um, and then we went about our days as normal and then the investigators starting to knock on our doors and stuff like that. Um, so then what actually happened was I had investigators come I walked out the front of just just to interrupt you so how did they investigate you were, were, were you part of a contact tracing kind of list or? so they, what they did is how they contacted me was i have a scooter and they ran my number plate and they ran the number plates 
and seen the footage that I was with the person who had tested positive and that's how they knocked on my door and knew where I lived from running my number plate. Okay. So then did they call you up or did they come straight to the house or what happens next? Yeah, so they came straight to my house. I didn't get a call or anything. I literally walked out the front and it was two undercover investigators. And they said, oh, do you know so-and-so? I said, yes. They said, have you been with them? I said, yep. I told them my whereabouts, where I'd been, everything like that. And they said, no worries. And they said, had you had a COVID test done? I said, yes, I had when I had it just because I was so scared of in the moment and I've been to one of these quarantine camps before, only literally a month before this. So I know what it was like. I was just really scared. It was just a horrible position to be in and I just I just lied and said, look, yeah, I have when I haven't. They said, you know, they, they drove off. About five minutes later they called me and they said, we've tried to check the system and your name's nowhere. We can't find you. And I said, look, I've lied to you. I'm completely sorry. I, I'm so apologetic you know, I'm I'm scared. I don't want to, you know, this is just such a scary thing. Um, and they said, yep, righto, stay there. Someone's going to come and test you. I said, all right. So I stayed there and I just waited for someone to come and test me. No one came to test me. The next people who rocked up at my house were two other police officers. They blocked my so driveway. These are, these are actually uniformed police officers, normal yep. police officers. So then the police officers blocked my driveway. I walked out and I said, what's going on? Are you guys testing me for COVID? What's happening? They said, no, you're getting taken away and you have no choice. You're going to Howard Springs. Um, you either come with us now um, and we'll put you in the back of the Divi van So, or you can have a choice to get a COVID cab. So, of course, I chose the COVID cab because they said, well, if we're to take you, we're going to um, hand you a $5,000 fine. So, I, of course, I didn't want that to happen. So I just said, look, I don't consent to this. I don't I don't understand why I can't just self-isolate at home like a lot of other people are doing. Um, and they just said, we've just been told from higher up where to take you. And that's all that there is. So Howard Springs is the biggest COVID camp in Australia, isn't it? It's Correct. a huge yes. network of cabins that is built to house potentially infected people. Yeah, so they are literally bringing in now hundreds of people that are of close contact or that have COVID. So it doesn't even matter if you test negative on your first test, your second or your third. They need to, because you're a close contact, you have to stay in there for 14 days no matter what. So let's get back to this situation at your house. So the, these two policemen, what is the choice they give you exactly? It's come with us in this van or yep. you get a $5,000 fine. Yeah, so it's, you come with us, we take you there and you're given a $5,000 fine or we will call a COVID cab and right. we will not fine you. So it's pretty much you have to consent, otherwise you're getting a $5,000 fine. Okay, so then... Some hours later, the COVID cab arrives. Yeah, it was probably the policeman stayed at my driveway until this cab came. They said, can you please go pack a bag? So I went and packed a bag. And whilst I was packing my bag, I had my housemates at the front speaking to them. And they said, is she able to just do a test? And once that test comes back negative, is she able to you know, leave and come and come back to normal life. Um, and they, these police officers said, yes, we're pretty sure you, that all you have to do is return a negative test and you'll be released. So that gave me, you know, that calmed me down knowing, okay, well, if I return a negative test, I can just go back home. So I got in the COVID cab and the police... I think we've up. got some footage that your mum took, actually, that we can play of you waving goodbye and getting into the back of a van. I've just um, come and she's, she's being taken away, but look at the COVID van. Bistro pokies and functions. How professional. Long live COVID. <laughs> that is a COVID taxi, but it's actually a casino bus. So driving there and then the police, or police escorted me in and then I never seen them police again. They left. They weren't allowed into the facility. So 
So then new police came and they they were in charge. Obviously, I was very distressed. I was crying. I was saying this isn't fair. You know, it was just horrible to go through. And I I stood there and I just said, can I please have a test now? Because I need these test results back as I will be negative. And I, I later on, I was negative. The whole time I was there, I was negative. Um, and I said, once these go negative, am I allowed to leave? And she said, no, you're here for the 14 days. You literally get put on the back of a golf buggy with your bags and these people are in hazmat suits and everything. They they don't want to come near you because they think you're infectious and they literally drop you to your room and they leave you. They don't come and say anything. They don't check up. They don't do anything. You know, you get delivered your meals once a day and you are just left. I know you're allowed to talk to people. I mean, you, you, we could have, have you spoken to people from inside the camp? We can, but we're only allowed to stay in our designated areas, which is nothing, maybe two metres. Um, we have a, a deck that we're allowed to go out and maybe get a little bit of sunlight, but that is it. If you get caught off your decking without a mask on or anything, um, you get a $5,000 fine. So to, what's what's the go? So this I'm going to give you a warning, yeah? It's an official warning that you have to stand up and obey the rules while you get, yeah? And that's, we have to go to the rules again. I don't care. So am I allowed to go background. to the laundry? You're allowed to go to the laundry, but you've got to wear a mask, yeah? Yeah, right yeah. Eh? And you definitely can't go up the fencing rails, but you're allowed to go to the laundry, yeah? That's always been the case, yeah? Right, so if I was sitting just here, which is right near the fence, why are these guys in a cabin that's right near the fence? It makes no sense, does it? Yeah, but you can't leave your balcony to go to the fence to talk to somebody else. That's just obvious, yeah? So if I was Again, on that balcony... Have to make sense. So there's, we always say there has to be lines everywhere drawn, yeah? And one of the lines is you cannot leave your balcony and you cannot go to someone else. Where it makes no sense or it doesn't seem right to you, that is the line and that's what the law is, yeah? And that's how it goes, yeah? The law. Well, the show direction. There's a law that says show that. direction, yep. There's a show direction, yeah? And how the behaviour must be done, especially in this area because it's much more highly infectious. And lucky to have infected people, yeah? Highly infectious when all of us people are negative. So, so far, the risk is still very high, yeah? yeah. Just while you're here, can we just do that? Otherwise, the next time it's a $5,000 fine. We don't want to do that. It's a $5,000 fine, $5, fine if what? If you breach again. If if I walk out onto that path. Without your mask on, for no reason, I'll the laundry. If I cross that yellow line. Saying that you've broken the rule. That I've broken the rule, I will be issued with a $5,000 fine. That's correct. Right. Okay. I could have, we could even do that now, but we're giving the warning first. Have a chat with you because it's a big fine. I'd rather just do the right thing, yeah? But like I said, I'm not here to fight with you. Yeah. I don't want to fight with you. Yeah. I just want everybody to do the right thing, and yeah. unfortunately, it's my job to make sure they do. I don't care. The ins and outs. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm just here to make sure the rules are here. So, yeah? so, what did that experience make you think? Like, what, what was your feeling about? being in that situation with those people in control of your every movement? Oh, it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. You feel like you're in prison. You feel like you've done something wrong. It's inhumane what they're doing. Like, you, you are so small. You, They just overpower you and you're literally nothing. It's like you do what we say or you're in trouble, we'll lock you up for longer. Yeah, they were even threatening me that if I was to do this again, we will extend your time in here. So during that whole time, how many times were you tested and did you ever test positive? Never tested positive at all and I was tested three times. So at the moment, you haven't had COVID? Never had COVID and I was of close contact to someone, never got it and I was treated literally like a criminal. There's been a lot of press in Australian media about how these camps are really luxurious and it's like, having a holiday. Did it feel like a holiday for you? No, no way. You are literally trapped in a box on your decking with fences all around you, um, cameras everywhere. Like it is, it's just astounding. Like you're literally treated like a prisoner in there. It's so hard. It's like people aren't, you know, we just abide by the rules and we're just going with the flow, but this flow doesn't seem to be getting any better. Like, you know, we have hardly any numbers and they're doing this to us still. It's just, 
it's just crazy. I originally lived in Victoria, Melbourne, where it was really, really bad and we we had lockdowns. We've been in lockdowns for months and months. And the reason why I moved to Darwin was to get away from that because Darwin wasn't as bad and the lockdowns weren't happening. So once I moved up here and then that one case happened and it, it's just crazy. Like they lock the whole state down um, and just sending heaps and heaps of people there. Well, you have to be jabbed to do anything. You have to wear masks. You have to basically become a free range slave because they haven't quite put the prison door on yet. But let's get in there with the introduction of AI, oh, yeah. full integration into the future of everyone in this country and indeed around the world. We just happen to be the vanguard. We are the test case. Unfortunately, people were swallowing it, and that's why it's going to be franchised to the rest of the world. I'm Lisa Wakeford. I'm here tonight at the Texas Tea in Picton, enjoying some quality time with friends. This will be our last night where we can all be together in a public place. And how are you feeling? Like shit. Like shit. We can't go anywhere. I've lost my job. Um, my friend sitting behind me, she's pretty much lost her job. Um, a lot of friends have lost their jobs. We're not allowed to go anywhere. We're not allowed to join up with friends and have coffee. We, oh, where do you start? <laughs> well, how does it make you, you feel? Like, is it? What, what do you think? How do you how do you feel about the government making all these rules now? I don't know whether I dare say that, but... Um, a lot of people say that to us. <laughs> oh, do they? <laughs> They're like, oh, I don't know if I can so, say that on camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can say what you want. It's absolute <laughs> It really is. I mean, come on. Who are they to tell us what we can and cannot do? And as for hearing that they're taking children from, what, 12-year-old plus children from school to go and get vaccinated against their parents' wishes? How the f***? How does that work? And what do you okay. think? Apparently there's a couple of staff here at this establishment. Yes, and at this establishment tonight. There's two of them. This is their last night working here. What are they going to do? What is the establishment going to do? So what's your message to the world about New Zealand? Little old New Zealand where they all think we're lovely and clean and green and awesome. <laughs> we're not. We're actually attending a protest tomorrow. Um, my husband and I... So on my husband's banner, uh, one, size, one side says bullying is not okay with me. And the other side says New Zealand used to be a happy place. On my banner I have, this is not New Zealand, free us from tyranny. And on the other side it says free New Zealand, bullying is never okay. Yeah. And what about, um, have you had your family, you know, there's so much division now. It's like New yes. Zealand's divided. Yes. Have you yes, experienced totally. that? Totally. Now, we have three sons and three daughter-in-laws. Two of our sons and two of our daughter-in-laws have been vaccinated with no choice. They haven't had a choice. It's either you get vaxxed or you don't have a job. And, I mean, these are, these are young men that need an income to live, to support their family. Um, the two that haven't been vaccinated are in Australia, not New Zealand. But my husband will find out as well in the next couple of days whether he will still have his job. Every decision is taken away. You can't do this, you can't do that. You feel like a second-hand citizen that, oh, you're not good enough to go to the club, you're not good enough to go to the local pub or the coffee bar or the gym or the hairdresser. What's happened to New Zealand? What has happened? The first seal has been opened, and that's what we're seeing right now. But when the second seal is opened, the reality will really set in. The Apostle Paul wrote, be alert, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, act like men, be strong, do everything in love. Standing firm doesn't mean to capitulate and comply when things get rough. Paul told the Ephesians, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. Stand, therefore, with truth like a belt around your waist, 
righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. Why put on the full armor of God? So that you may be able to resist in the evil day. This is the evil day, and we all know it. If you don't know Jesus Christ, then you're not ready to face eternity. If you think you know him, but you're still living in sin and making excuses for it, you're not ready to face eternity either. But if you truly want to know him and have a personal relationship with him and know that your soul and your spirit will be with him when all of this comes to a conclusion, then I want you to go down in the description box below. You'll find a link down there to pray this simple prayer with me. It will help you to ask him into your heart and your life. So you'll have the assurance that when you die in this body, you'll be with him forever. Think about it.